It's JCPenney's happy birthday sale, and the gifts are all yours. Celebrate this Saturday with an in-store coupon giveaway. You could peel and reveal $10, $50, or even $100 off. Don't miss out, but if you do, grab a coupon on the JCPenney app to save an extra 25% all week long. Hurry, party and Sunday. JCPenney. Coupon giveaway valid 415 while supplies last. In-store only. Must be 18 or older. Percent off coupon valid through 416. Exclusions apply. See store or jcp.com for details. Welcome to mini episode 103 of Real Life Ghost Stories and I have three spooky stories for you today and the last story is from January the 7th 2021 and story number one comes from Brian. I'm 51 now and I have an uncle that's younger than me. He's around 47. When I was about 12 years old I was at my cousin's house playing outside. This was before Playstations or Xboxes so we were outside just doing kids stuff. We decided to go down to my uncle's house to play, so we started walking down the path to his house. My grandfather built this house. There were no other houses ever on the spot, no graveyards around, and the closest house was across the street. We entered the house and made a left into the kitchen. My grandfather and grandmother were not home, so we had the house to ourselves. I was maybe three or four steps into the kitchen when I heard a woman scream and I stopped dead in my tracks and froze. I looked towards the other end of the kitchen where the basement door was and I saw it. A skeleton. It came up the basement stairs and turned its head and looked at me. Then it turned its body and started fast walking towards me with a bloody knife in its right hand. I unfroze, turned and ran out of the house. We ran into the yard and stopped and looked at each other. I said to my cousin, Did you see that? And he said yes, and he asked me what I saw. I said to him, You tell me what you saw. And he told me that he had seen a skeleton and it had a bloody knife in its hand. I told my parents about it and they told me it was my imagination. I told them that I must have a pretty good imagination because Andrew saw it too. I've never had another experience in that house before or after. I bet you didn't think we were going to start today's episode off with a walking skeleton. In my head, I am picturing the skeletons from, is it Sinbad? Maybe Sinbad? Or is it Jason and the Argonauts? I don't know, but you know those sort of claymation skeletons? That's what I'm picturing, which is obviously not, I would imagine, what Brian saw. But what a bizarre thing to see. I wonder if it was something else and your, and and the brain went the only way I can understand this is if I frame it as a skeleton or was it somebody dressed up or was it some, I don't know. I don't know. It reminds me of, I put it on Instagram a while ago, a good few weeks ago, I think maybe months ago, where somebody sent in a story where they saw something that sounds quite similar and they had drawn, they'd sketched a picture of it and I posted it on Instagram. That's what it reminds me of. Hang on, I'm going to check when exactly that was. It was mini episode 81. And the picture has just given me the heebie-jeebies all over again. So I wonder, Brian, if you are listening and you have Instagram, or even if you don't have Instagram, just drop me an email. If you've seen the picture, is it something similar to that? And story number two comes from Caitlin. When I was about 10 years old, my family lived in a house located at the end of a small cul-de-sac. The house itself wasn't very old, but the land it was built on used to be mountains. In this particular house, it just always felt somewhat eerie. You know, the typical feeling of not being alone or being watched. There were six children living in the house, and my mom and her husband. I was sitting in what used to be our family room watching TV. On one end of the wall with the TV sat a fake plant in a woven basket which stood about three and a half feet tall. Out of nowhere this plant just fell over. There was literally nothing near it, nor was it sitting crooked or leaning 
or whatever for it to just fall over. Sometime later, one of my siblings came downstairs and obviously noticed the plant still laying on the ground since it landed right towards the bottom of the steps to enter the family room and basically asked me why the plant was laying on the ground and why hadn't I picked it up. I said I was simply too afraid to get up and move it and just explained that it had randomly fallen over. At the time of us living in this house, two of my neighbours both had incidences of a resident taking their own lives just a few years apart. I wouldn't doubt there would be some paranormal activity in this area. I've had some other very unusual occurrences in the past as well, all of which took place at my grandmother's house, who lived in the same subdivision as us. It was only about a seven minute walk or so from our house to hers. Growing up, I was always very close to my grandmother, and I still am today. Before moving into the house I previously mentioned, we lived with my grandparents for a few years, since my mom was a single mom of six, working full-time night shifts as a surgical technician. At the time of us living with them, I don't particularly remember anything odd or remotely paranormal occurring. I'd say a few years after moving into the house I mentioned in my last story, and after my grandfather's passing is when some weird instances started happening. When I was younger, I would often stay the night with my grandmother. I mean, I pretty much continued to live with her for the longest time. My grandmother unexpectedly got custody of my two young cousins. Since it was unexpected, we had a makeshift baby room set up in her craft room. This consisted of a pack and play placed in the middle of the room for the baby until we could get a real bedroom set up. I always slept in my grandmother's bed with her. One night we were laying in bed just trying to fall asleep when we both heard a bell ringing. Neither of us said anything or got up to check because no freaking thank you. We obviously checked with one another like you heard that too right? Besides the fact the baby being asleep in the room across the hall we made the decision to stay put in my grandmother's bed. Not long after that first bell rang, we heard it a second time. My grandmother, of course, sent me to check it out. In the craft room where the baby was, my grandmother had a bookshelf with three small bells displayed on it. I went into the craft room with the bells and there was nothing to be seen but the sleeping baby. My next story also took place at my grandmother's house. I was not there for it, but my mom and my grandmother later told me about it. At the time of this occurrence, my mom, grandma and one of my brothers were making some wooden crafts. My mom and grandma were upstairs in the kitchen painting them, while my brother was downstairs using my grandfather's old saw to cut the pieces of wood. While painting, they heard the saw going and laughingly asked, what is he cutting up now? Assuming my brother was downstairs sawing up some more wood. Almost as soon as they said this, my brother comes inside from the front door after smoking a cigarette. After explaining what they just heard to my brother, he refused to go back down into the basement that day. My grandmother has an electric fireplace that is also her TV stand for the living room. The only way to turn the fireplace on is by using the small remote or lifting up a small metal flap on the front of it. Since the remote is small and she rarely uses the fireplace, my grandmother keeps the remote on the top shelf of the wooden corner shelf in her living room. Weirdly, if there's a lot of commotion going on, a lot of people talking or yelling, etc., the fireplace tends to turn on to the highest heat setting all on its own. In the past year or so, my grandmother's health has been declining, where she is now on oxygen 24-7. There are times her oxygen will drop too low that she must be hospitalised as a result. She just so happened to spend Christmas in the hospital and because she had to spend this holiday in the hospital they gifted her a small glass angel ornament. Once she arrived home and got settled in she had placed the angel on her electric fireplace. One night she, my sister and two younger cousins had all been relaxing on the couch watching TV when the angel, which was sat relatively far back on the fireplace, scooted off and shattered onto the floor. My sister, who's also a sceptic, claims that she had sat and watched it move from the fireplace to the floor. There was no one near it, or moving around the house to cause it to maybe bump and fall onto the floor. 
I was not there when this happened, as this was told to me by my grandmother and my sister. After they told me the story, we started talking about the other weird things that happened around my grandmother's house. My grandmother had mentioned to us that oftentimes when she is home alone, she can hear doors open and close when she is either sitting downstairs in the living room or when she is upstairs in her bedroom. Just to let you know as well that Caitlin has a Facebook page called Kate's Cups, that's K-A-I-T apostrophe S, for all your custom drinkware needs because they are crafty people in that family. Um, I would recommend looking up what it means when you hear a bell ringing. There's an old, is it an old like Irish legend or an old legend that when you hear like glass breaking and you can't find the source of it, that it means means a birth or a death. I don't really remember, but I wonder if hearing a bell ringing is something similar, that there is like a, a symbolic meaning behind it. It'd be probably be worthwhile looking up, to be honest. Today's episode is brought to you by ZocDoc. Hello. Do you like scary movies? Yeah, that's that's kind of that's kind of my whole shtick. Do you like spending hours scrolling on TikTok and diagnosing yourself with various medical conditions as a result? <gasps> You've been watching me. I am here to tell you something, so listen closely. Zocdoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition under the sun. Um, okay, oh, right, um, I'm confused. Is this not meant to be more murdery? More, more stabby? Yeah, I, I actually think I've gotten a bit of a bad rep, to be honest. And, uh, I'm trying a new approach, more, more helpful, more human. Wow, weird. But I'm listening. Surprise twists may work for horror movies, but not for medical care. With ZocDoc, there is no alarm and no surprises. Choose from thousands of patient-reviewed doctors and specialists, browse doctor profiles, upload and verify your insurance information, and get the care you need. I hear what you are saying, but this might be the weirdest thing that's ever happened to me. Go to ZocDoc.com slash ghost and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash ghost. We are it's JCPenney's happy birthday sale, and the gifts are all yours. Celebrate this Saturday with an in-store coupon giveaway. You could peel and reveal 10 50 or even $100 off. Don't miss out, but if you do, grab a coupon on the JCPenney app to save an extra 25% all week long. Hurry, party and Sunday. JCPenney. Coupon giveaway valid 415 while supplies last. In-store only. Must be 18 or older. Percent off coupon valid through 416. Exclusions apply. See store or jcp.com for details. And story number three comes from Dave. The first story happened in a little village in Norfolk called Burnham Market. This is a village on the coast, and my ex and I stayed in a cottage on one of the main streets, but within easy walking distance to the local beach. The cottage was perfectly pleasant during the day, but I distinctly remember feeling on edge at night time, certainly if I looked towards the back end towards the staircase. Falling asleep wasn't easy for me as I couldn't relax. I always had one eye on the doorway into the bedroom, which was directly at the top of the aforementioned staircase. Eventually, fatigue would take over and I would fall asleep. One night, while asleep, I started having a dream. In this dream, I wasn't myself, but was either part of or watching a family who were holidaying in the exact same place, staying in the exact same cottage. In this dream... The family went to the beach, and it ended in the horrific result of the two children drowning in the sea. At this point, I woke from the dream and found myself frozen in bed, seemingly unable to move. While being frozen in place, I found myself staring into a black void which had appeared in front of me since waking. I could make out the room around this blackness, in the periphery of my vision, I was transfixed on this mass, I couldn't turn away from it, nor did I dare to close my eyes. Gradually this mass grew smaller, until it disappeared completely, at which point I felt able to move again. 
I can't remember if that was the last night there or if the feelings of unease disappeared after this, but I certainly didn't experience a repeat of it. The second experience was much more personal. I only ever knew one of my grandparents due to various reasons, and that was my maternal grandmother. I spent many Sunday afternoons with her and my parents as a child and would regularly walk to her house with my mum when she moved nearer. Over the years and as I grew into my teens and early twenties I didn't see as much of her. I guess adult life took over. She also started to become more frail and suffer from a few ailments. One of these was becoming more forgetful or less sharp. Not actual dementia but just slightly confused. I became the tech expert for her whenever she had issues with the TV or other things and she would call my mum to get her to ask me to pop over to help. I remember one Friday in 2003 I happened to be at my mum's house. My grandmother called and asked to speak to me. This never happened, it was always contact via my mum and even with me being there it was odd to have her ask for me. I spoke to her and she said her TV wasn't working and asked me to come over. I went over and sorted her TV and had time to have a cup of tea with her. The next two hours were odd, as she was lucid and sharp. I had not seen her like this for over a decade. We had a great catch-up. All throughout, she was on top of information and really bright in conversation. At this time, it seemed like a really nice thing to happen as opposed to being odd. Two days later on a Sunday, we had a call saying my grandmother had fallen and was on the floor in the bedroom. An ambulance had been called, but as her closest relatives, I took my mum over to help look after her while we waited. When we arrived, we found her on the floor in the bedroom. And when she saw me, despite being in pain, she reached out to hug me and was pleased that I was there. The ambulance arrived and the paramedics helped her into her wheelchair and then the ambulance all during which she kept asking me, Where's David? Is David coming? She went to the hospital that day and unfortunately didn't come out. She spent just under a week in the hospital with many visitors from her family, but not me. I guess I assumed that she would come out eventually. The family talked of her being in and out of consciousness, not knowing who they were, seeing things in her room, especially cats. Then one day she was reasonably lucid and bright again and was able to hold some form of conversation with the family members present. The day after she passed away, my dad called me at work to let me know. He told me not to come to the hospital, that it was okay. I hadn't experienced a death of anyone before, so I didn't know what to do. I decided that I would go to the hospital, partly to check on how my mum was, but also to see if I could say goodbye to my grandmother somehow. I got in the car and drove the 15 miles or so to the hospital. I didn't feel particularly emotional and being naive to feelings and how they sometimes show themselves, I got angry at myself for not being upset. I decided I needed to force some emotion from myself, so put some music on that might inspire some emotional impact. My favourite band were and still are R.E.M., who have many tearjerker songs and I went through their most recent best of to trigger said tears. I went through several tracks and nothing, including Everybody Hurts, which I assumed would be the one to hit home. I eventually got on the last track of the CD, a song called Electrolyte. For some reason, this perfectly happy song triggered the emotion. Tears flowed, my voice broke as I tried to sing along. The last line may have some significance as to why this track was the one. I'm not scared. I'm out of here. Is a great way to face the ending of something. To cut out the middle part of the story, I got to the hospital, nobody was there, my family had gone home, so I simply went home. Fast forward a little while later, a few weeks or maybe months. My grandmother had been cremated and the family were holding a little private service to have her ashes interred into a plot in a local cemetery. For a reason that escapes me now, I couldn't make this service, so I decided to visit the plot later that day and pay my respects. When I was ready to make my visit, I jumped in the car as it was only a short distance to the cemetery and I thought I would listen to the song that I now associated with my grandmother. So I put the CD in 
and skipped to track 14, Electrolyte. And the CD wouldn't play. Not one note of that song, no jumping or skipping of the track, it just would not play. I checked every other track on the album and all would work fine. Electrolyte just would not play. I kept trying on my short journey and became extremely frustrated at the situation as I wanted to listen to the song I had associated with her and to charge me with that same emotion I had felt on the day she passed. I arrived at the cemetery and sat in the car park a short while to get the song to play and nothing. I got out of the car and made my way to find the plot. I found it quickly and paid my respects. I remember having a conversation with her, but what I spoke about I don't know. After a short while I left and got back in the car. In vain I attempted to play the song again and was met with the same results. Annoyed I started to drive off. As I exited the car park I went through the cemetery gates and as soon as I went over the threshold Electrolyte jumped into life at full volume and with no issue. A chill went through me and I stopped the car and looked at the CD player. I went back to the start of the track again and it played perfectly. I remember smiling and assuming this had been my grandmother letting me know that whatever connection we had in those days before she passed away had continued, and this was indeed her song. I know it's an easily debunked story. Who didn't have a CD that skipped? But that same CD, that same song, the repeated futile attempts and then suddenly jumping into life? I like to think that it was more than that. My grandmother died on the 10th of November 2003. Ten years later, in the summer of 2013, my wife and I were pregnant with our first child, our daughter. A chance early appointment with a midwife identified an issue with her heart and we were rushed to hospital. This led to three months of my wife being in hospital, being treated with medication at a high enough dose for it to pass through the umbilical cord and to our daughter to help her. Every day was emotional and to make it harder I wasn't allowed to stay with her overnight. Each night after I left at 11 I would visit the cemetery which was locked at that time. I would stand at the gates and ask grandma to watch over us and help our daughter to pull through. I never told anyone I did this as it felt like it wasn't the sort of logical sensible thing to do. The treatments worked and on the 6th of November 2013 almost 10 years to the day that my grandmother passed away Our daughter was born and was beyond healthy and remains so to this day. Clearly the medical treatments did their job and science is to thank for her survival. But there is always a part of me that assumes that grandma had a hand in it. A few years later, when our daughter was talking and having legible conversations with us, she was spending some time at my parents' house and looking at photos on their dresser. She saw a photo of grandma taken a few years before she had passed. She pointed at it and said, That was me when I was Nana's mum. Our daughter is named Amelia after her great grandmother, my grandmother. To my knowledge, we had never, up until that point, told her where her name had come from. One night while putting Amelia to bed, she told me she was a little scared about staying in her room. I did the usual dad stuff and told her that she didn't need to worry. I then made the mistake of asking what she was scared of. She told me, rather sleepily, the curtains. This was a little odd, so I turned to look at them. They looked perfectly normal, so again I made the mistake of asking, why do the curtains scare you? To which she replied, because they walk by you and look right at you. Suffice to say I tucked her in and got the fuck out of that room. She was in the bathroom one day brushing her teeth. I walked by on the landing and she called for me so I went to see her. She was standing on a stool in front of the sink and looking in the mirror. She said, Daddy, do you want to meet my friends? I assumed she was talking about some dolls or something in her room. So I said, yes babe, of course I do. To which she then looked back in the mirror. But her eyes rose upward as if she was looking at the ceiling at the other side of the room. And she said, they live up there. They just want to play. Suffice to say, I made sure she was brushing her teeth and then got the fuck out of that room. Most recently, we were binging some ghost shite on TV and we were in the middle of a show when I could hear something. I muted the TV and listened. 
and it was Amelia in her room. She was repeatedly calling for Chloe over and over again in the absolute creepiest inflection ever. We have no idea who Chloe is. She's never mentioned anyone called Chloe before. After about 10 calls for Chloe, there was a pause. And then with the same creepy inflection, she started calling Daddy. Fuck. I looked at Stacy and she gave me a smug look that said, It's on you to check this one out. I slowly got myself built up to going to check and started to get out of bed when something flew against the wall in the boys' room. I froze, and then in my proudest moment of fatherhood, I thought, you ain't hurting my kids, ghost, and strode onto the landing. I glanced in the boys' room and saw a small object that is normally up on a shelf near Emmett's bed was lying on the floor. I left that right there. I went into Amelia, who was half sitting up looking at me, creepy as fuck, and I asked her, who's Chloe? She replied, what do you mean? I told her that she was calling out to Chloe and she said, I don't think I was. I got her back to sleep and then again got the fuck out of that room. I should say that while Amelia is creepy as fuck, she is beautiful, smart, funny and we obviously love her massively. We just need a small exorcism and all will be well. Doesn't every child benefit massively from just a small exorcism? Just a light exorcism. It can't harm them. It can only improve the paranormal relations in your household. I'm all for it. Have her exercised. But in all seriousness, creepy kids are creepy and we, we've established that. But it does sound like Amelia is a lovely little in tune person and just maybe maybe sees things a little bit differently. I do think as well that it's absolutely wild that Everybody Hurts was not the song that brought you to tears. Emotions are so weird, man. They they you know, they come out at the weirdest of times. And I just want to... I'm not going to do like a PSA or anything. But like, I know that you were younger in the story. And you said that you just couldn't figure out why you weren't feeling emotional. If anybody's listening to this and you go through anything. And you don't respond in a way that you expect to respond. Or you don't respond in a way that other people think that you should respond. Don't worry about it. Everybody responds to stuff in their own way. That's just the way it is. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Thank you to Brian, Caitlin and Dave for sending in your stories. If you would like to send in your story, you can do so by emailing it to Podcast at gmail.com. You can also check out our website, reallifeghoststoriespodcast.com. And on that note, I shall see you next time. It's JCPenney's happy birthday sale, and the gifts are all yours. Celebrate this Saturday with an in-store coupon giveaway. You could peel and reveal $10, $50, or even $100 off. Don't miss out. But if you do, grab a coupon on the JCPenney app to save an extra 25% all week long. Hurry, party ends Sunday. JCPenney. Coupon giveaway valid 415 while supplies last. In-store only. Must be 18 or older. Percent off coupon valid through 416. Exclusion supply. See store or jcp.com for details.